Um, among the things that we think are, are, are part of the cause for hoarding behavior have to do with the way in which people process information. Uh, and, and we think that people who hoard process information in several unusual ways. One of them has to do with the nature of things they pay attention to. People who hoard pay attention to the unusual detail in objects, like the shape, the color, the texture, and so forth. And they don't necessarily have the same view of these, uh, of these things in terms of what is the most important feature, for instance, uh, of a bottle cap. You can focus on the shape and the color and the texture and maybe give it value because of that. Or you can focus on the fact that if it's a bottle cap without any bottle associated with it, maybe it has no useful function. One of the things that is related to why this develops, we think, is the way in which information is processed by people who have hoarding problems. Attentional problems are one feature of this, where there's a tendency to, to focus on the unusual detail of, a, of an object, and that gives that unusual detail more value. Another characteristic is, has to do with the way in which we think about objects. And, and the way in which we organize our lives. Most of us organize our lives categorically. So if we get an, a, an electricity bill in the mail, we put it in a category for, called bills or a category called electricity bills or something. So when we need to find it, we can go to that category and locate it and do whatever we need to do with it. But people who hoard seem, for the most part, to live their lives a little bit differently. Instead of categorically organizing Thing, the things in their lives. They tend to organize them visually and spatially. So if you ask someone with a hoarding problem where their last electricity bill is, they're likely to tell you that it's somewhere in the middle of the pile in this room and maybe a foot down in the pile because that's the last place I saw it. So the organization is, is by remembering in space where objects are based on when I saw them last. Now, a lot of us organize some things this way. The top of my desk is organized that way. I've got piles of things, and I remember what's there because I last saw it there. But if I were to do that for all the possessions I owned, that system would break down quickly, and, and pretty soon I would, I would have a non-functional way of organizing all the things in my life. So this, this problem with categorization is one of the ways in which the processing of information is a little bit different in people who hoard. Another feature of the information processing that we see has to do with the amount of information people pay attention to with respect to an object. So a person with a hoarding problem will, will look at an object and focus on all the unusual details of that possession. And those details will have meaning, they'll have importance, even things that are, that are more aesthetic than utilitarian. So they may focus on the shape and the color of, of bottle caps, rather than the fact that the, this bottle cap doesn't have a bottle to go with it and therefore it has no useful function. Um, <clears throat> what happens then is when people try to make a decision about this object, they're faced with many more details to consider than most of us are. And this leaves them with a, a difficulty in being able to make a decision. And it's one of the deficits that we see in people who hoard. Making any kind of decision, taking a large amount of information, filtering it down and use it to, using it to come to a conclusion about something seems to be very difficult. And, and we see this often in people who have hoarding problems in everything they do, from ordering off a menu at a restaurant or deciding what clothes to put on in the morning. These are decisions that sometimes they struggle with for long periods of time. And we, we think it's related not so much to a deficit, but, but rather a, an extra amount of information that they're paying attention to that the rest of us don't. Uh, and for a while, we thought that perhaps people who hoard were more intelligent than the rest of us because they had this more complex way of thinking. I'm not sure that's true, but, but I do think that people who hoard may have a, more of a creative streak than the rest of us because they notice the unusual detail in objects and they appreciate those details. They're, those details are given importance. And that, I think, is a mark of, of creativity. The unfortunate thing is that this form of creativity it also runs, gets them into, into trouble. So it's almost as though this is creativity run amok, that it's too much creativity and they can't manage their lives because of it.
Now, all of these information processing deficits seem to be associated with a particular area in the brain. And indeed, some recent research suggests that there are differences in what happens in the brains of people who are in these areas that, are, that control these kinds of information processing functions. So we're seeing some overlap between what we're learning about the ex their experience of these possessions and what's going on in the brain.